Okay, let's learn how to grow something. So we're gonna do microgreens as your first little project. I feel like microgreens are a really great start to feeling really good about gardening. Uh, so this is what you're gonna need. Some organic seed starting mix. Make sure your seed starting mix is a good quality. I picked this up from a local Home Depot, a local feed store, tons of places sell seed starting mix. You're gonna need two trays. You can use tin foil, you can make, you can do small, you can do big, depending on where you're growing your microgreens. You can grow them in the window, you can use grow lights like I'm gonna use. Uh, just depends on your personal setup, but you can grow microgreens indoors, um, in your garage, whatever works for you, depending on the climate that you're in. And I'll show you my setup when all set is set, it all is said and done. And then also some microgreen seeds. So these I got from Botanical Interest. They have a really great little starter kit. These aren't all of them. This is a couple of them. So today we'll be growing a basil blend. We'll be doing their jazzy mix and um, some crests, and then also some brassicas. So. Um, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Brassica, Brassica. Somebody correct me in the comments. <laughs> All right, so let's get to work. Okay, so let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half and half in each tray. I am not going to grow like one full tray of each thing. Um, simply because I think it's good. You can succession sew. So you can start a tray today and then in two weeks start another tray and then in two weeks start another tray and when you get in the habit and this could be part of your weekly rhythm it's maybe on sundays every other week you start a tray or maybe it's something your one of your kids does um, to help around with the house but this is something that you know you can do all through winter so you can have uh, winter greens all through winter you can make salads out of microgreens. i mean um, this along with sprouts will provide you and your family for really great fresh nutrient rich greens so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take my seed starting mix it has to be seed starting mix because we're starting seeds i know like um it's tempting just to use like potting mix but potting mix and raised bed mix is um, not as light and fluffy. This has um, like peat moss and coconut core and vermiculite in it to give your seeds a really great place to grow. So I'm just going to do a thin layer. You don't need a lot of seed starting mix either, which is really nice. Um, this bag was already open, so you probably could get away, you know, with one bag for every two trays. You can also reuse your seed starting mix. Um, I um, saved all my seed starting mix from um, last winter. It's in a, it's outside, like in a pot or a big bucket. I haven't like um, reused it yet, but I don't throw away my dirt. Like, I don't put my dirt outside. I keep it um, because you can reuse it. All right. So I kind of put the dirt in and I patted it down. And what I like to do when I start seeds, and I'm going to link this thing in my comments. I love this thing. Um, what I like to do when I'm starting seeds is I like to wet the soil first. because you're only gonna like put like one fourth of an inch. And again, like I'm gonna show you how to read the seed packets because it's very important. Like everything you need to know about the seeds that you buy and when to plant them and how deep to plant them. Um, it is all in your seed packet, okay? So we'll get our first layer done. There's like a hole here, a little bit more there. And I'm going to link also another site in the comment section, a really cool seed site that I think you should get your seeds from. I haven't ordered from there yet, but I have a friend who's starting, um, a, he's starting like a, a business of, of selling microgreens 
and um, they got their sprouts and their microgreens or seeds from this place. And I went to the site and I had already ordered these. So obviously I'm gonna use these first, but once I'm done using these, I am so excited to put in an order for this other site because they have so many different kinds of things that you can order and you can literally just like, like I don't think we think to make salads out of microgreens. Like we always think like, you know, baby greens or romaine, but you can legit just make full on salads with microgreens. You don't even need leafy greens, but you can also let your microgreens grow a little bit bigger and you can grow them into baby greens. You can grow baby greens in your gardens. Um, greens are really easy thing to grow. You can grow baby kale and baby collards. And, and if you live in the, you know, Western, Western Washington, like I do, you can grow this stuff year round. Okay. So that water is going to go into the dirt. So what we're going to do first, I should have brought use my leggings. <laughs> All right. So first we're going to do these microgreens, which are mustard, cress, cabbage, radish so this is going to be a little bit spicy um so we're going to do half of these so it's fun too because on on the seed packets usually most companies will like make suggestions of like what to eat them with and how to eat them um okay struggle bus over here can't open the seed packet there we go all right, so let me show you the back of the seed packet now that I destroyed it. So it's kind of cool because this one shows you like the different plants and what they're going to look like when they grow up to be like little leaves and tells you how many days till they emerge. So five, and it's five to seven days they'll emerge. Um, and so I'll probably have, yeah, it says maturity 12 to 14 days. So in two weeks, in less than two weeks or about two weeks, I will be able to start harvesting these. Um, and then seed spacing, I'm not going to pay attention to that. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle them on and then, um, but seed depth is important. So one eighth of an inch to one fourth of an inch. So what I'm going to do is then I'm just going to put a bunch in my hand. So I got the seeds in my hand and I'm just going to take them and I'm just going to sprinkle them. I'm not going to put them too close together, but I'm just going to sprinkle them because you don't want to crowd them too much. Um, when I did my Ann Wigmore certification, we did a lot of uh, wheatgrass and microgreen growing. Um, we did quite a few classes and um, they just kind of put the seeds on thick. But if you want to try to grow these to baby greens, then you might want to space them out a little bit more. And you know what, like for your first tray, like just sprinkle them on see how that works maybe next time you do you do more or maybe the next time you do less um it's going to be trial and error but you can you know plant you're gonna be planting new ones every two weeks so that you have a constant flow so you'll be able to see all right and i should have brought out a marker like a seed marker to write out what i planted but i'm the worst at that so do that <laughs> write out what you planted all right and then this is upland crest so watercress if you're familiar with watercress it's um very peppery it's really refreshing um so and what i love about the back of these two it tells you kind of like what um what nutrients you're getting out of your mi microgreens um and this one you know talks about how it has vitamin a and vitamin c and one of the things that you may not know about baby greens and microgreens and sprouts is that they are the most nutrient dense um, or anything that's sprouted is going to be the most nutrient dense um, age that the plant is. Once a plant reaches full maturity, it's actually the least nutritious. And also if you're buying a plant in a grocery store, um, you have to consider also that, you know, you don't know what kind of soil it was grown in. You don't know, um, I mean, there, if it's organic, so I'm just gonna do the same thing here while I talk to you. If it's organic, you know, um, it doesn't have pesticides, but also the 
quality of the soil um, does dictate the quality of the food that you're eating. So all the information is not really there for us. All that we know is that it doesn't have pesticides, which is a good thing because pesticides do, um, you know, poke tiny little holes in your gut lining and does create leaky gut and is something you want to avoid. Um, need a little bit more. But one of the things you have to consider is when you do buy veggies, um, full grown, especially in the market, you have to take into consideration that once the, the plant is separated from the stem and the roots, it starts to lose its nutrient value. And plus like think of the, you know, the amount of time it takes for the plant to then end up on the shelf. So, you know, it's packaged, it's put in a car or a plane or whatever, it's flown or transported to wherever it is. And then it ends up on, the shelf and then it sits on the shelf for how long ever long until you buy it and then you buy it and then it ends up in your fridge and then it's in your fridge probably right up until right before it starts to rot and then you eat it and at that point is there really that much nutrients left in it like maybe but you're gonna get the most nutrients really from growing your own food and from eating it in this state in this microgreen sprouted state and it's so easy it saves you so much money I think one of these packets is like five bucks which grows you like so much food. And like, you know, when you think about how much um, a bag of microgreens costs or even a broccoli, like, you know, you're getting a whole tray of broccoli nutrients here, a whole bunch of um, vitamin K and all the amazing things that come from broccoli sprouts um, that have been uh, scientifically shown to greatly increase our brain quality and um, uh, fight off a lot of disease. So, really cool saves you money it's fun and you can grow your own food and and nerd out okay so now you have your seeds right so then so one fourth of dirt so i'm just going to put my dirt on right on the top and just keep it pretty shallow it doesn't need a lot of dirt really like one eighth to one fourth of an inch is probably like a sprinkle there are also like some flowers that like, like chamomile, when I planted chamomile in my garden last year, I just sprinkled it along the top of the dirt. I didn't even cover it in dirt and it, it thrived. So, um, always read the back of your seed packets because you know, it's in our nature to just bury seeds like super dark, deep and not like really know how deep to do it. Um, so just gonna give it a little gentle pat nothing too crazy. I just want to make sure that there's seed cover, there's dirt covering everything. And then I'm going to get this, my handy dandy sprayer again. And I'm just going to spray it all on and I'll, I'll spray it more uh, after the fact, but I'm going to do this one and it's the same thing. So this is a mellow blend. Um, so this is the Brassica blend. So, or I say things like really wrong because I'm I'm from Miami, so I have a lot of little different dialects <laughs> in my head. And then I'm also a West Coast transplant. <laughs> so my pronunciation isn't isn't the best. So I'm totally okay with you correcting me. Um, I remember the first time I when I first started gardening, I, in my stories, I was staring, sharing my nasturtiums and somebody, I was calling them nasturiums. And somebody was like, uh, with love, nasturtium, it's nasturtium. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Our broccoli, bok choy, red acre cabbage, kohlrabi, and Mizuna mustard. All these really good nutrient dense greens in here. So in a perfect world, I would have had a tray already grown and ready to show you what it's going to look like, but I want to encourage you to do this with me. I'm going to put links below um, for that seed site that I told you about, but I'm also going to put some links to where you can buy organic microgreens on Amazon so that you can go ahead and Amazon Prime yourself all of everything that you need. Um, these trays, yes, they're plastic, but I just, these are trays that I bought last winter and I just washed with soap and water and sanitized um, and reused. So yes, they're plastic, but you can reuse them year after year after year. 
until they crack apart and then they can turn into stuff that the kids use to play with. Um, but I'm just going to put everything that you need to Amazon Prime so that you can do this alongside with me. Um, and you can go ahead and get your setup going and get your seeds started. Again, if you have a south facing window, um, like my bathroom window is actually perfect for growing seeds because it is right by where the sun is most of the day. Just to get your phone and put up the compass app and just look where you're where south and then find your south facing window. Um, if you live in Florida, which I am from Florida originally, I used to grow microgreens out on my lanai. So if you have a porch, if you live in an apartment, the heat and the sunlight is really all plants need to germinate. Um, so if you live someplace where it's warm, you can just put them in indirect sunlight um, on your porch and keep them moist and they will grow. It's so freaking cool. It's <laughs> so fun. Um, love microgreens. Okay, so this is the mix that I'm most excited about. I love the idea of growing baby basil. Does anybody else think that's so fun? Um, so this is the Genovese basil, which usually you make pesto for, from. This is from the Genovese re region of Italy. And um, dark opal basil, which is the purple basil, which smells so freaking good. So it's both of them. So it's going to have purple little leaves in it, which is, again, so fun and nerdy. I love it. So we're going to do half of this basil because who doesn't love to eat a bunch of basil? And these seeds are so tiny. So I'm going to do a very thin layer of these. I kind of did the brassicas on kind of thick. But these I'm gonna keep pretty thin because I wanna see if I can grow them kind of big. Um, basil loves heat. It is a summer plant, it is perfect for your garden. Um, you know, that's another thing. These seeds can double as something that you can also do seed starts. So while you're, you know, doing these, you can also um, start some seeds in a little seed, start, seed starter tray. All right. So again, let's look at the packet, one fourth of an inch, one fourth of an inch. Everything's about the same. So I find that the only seeds that really go any deeper than one fourth of an inch are like um, sunflowers and squash and cucumbers, those bigger seeds, um, peas. Those are usually like a half an inch or an inch. Um, so usually little seeds are going to be like a lot more shallow or some like not even plant at all. Like the flowers, there's a lot of flowers that they just, they, if you kind of think, I think about it, um, how in nature, you know, um, seeds get spread through, um, from bee wings and legs and birds and stuff like that. And so they just kind of spread in flight and from, you know, being shaken from wind and animals. So that is why okay so i think i got enough dirt on there so i'm just going to moisten it up again oh, i have just a little bit of dirt in here i'm just gonna just put it on okay so gonna moisten it up and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the top on so you want to do you want to have a dome and I also use a heat pad because I am in my garage it was snowing today it's anywhere between the mid 30s and in the 70s like I live in Washington in western Washington um, so it was snowing today it was hailing today but last week it was 72. So it's not quite time to trust nature just yet with our little babies that are not heat tolerant or not for uh, um, um, frost tolerant. I do have my peas out there. I do have like um, uh, broccoli planted and stuff like that. Um, borage and other flowers that are frost tolerant, but I'm not putting things out just yet that are not frost tolerant. I have all that growing right here. I have like cucumber and tomato. And so um, I need to plant up a lot of my plants already. So I'm probably gonna do that for the next video. So for the next video, 
I'll show you how I pot up my seed starts. Um, the greenhouse came to a screeching halt uh, since we have to, uh, we had to finish the garden and I wanted the roof higher. So Kevin is now trying to figure out how the hell he's going to build the roof without killing himself. Um, so we got the garden finished, irrigation all set up, everything is ready to go for me to plant. So now that we had this freak like week of like really cold weather, I feel like I can, I have to also replant a lot of peas the birds got, um, I only have like maybe 25% of the peas that I planted actually growing because of the birds. So that's another thing that you can look for in the coming weeks is my, I, I did like, I did a bird netting video in my pea massacre video and I just created like this makeshift like cover for the peas. Did not work by the way. Have I mentioned that this is not like necessarily a, a, a YouTube that's going to teach you how to do things, <laughs> but mostly just to show you how much failing you really have to do in order to learn how to learn to do things. You know, I wish I would have started this last year so you could see the massive mess that my garden was last year, but no, all you guys saw was like the success, right? So I really wanted to start this channel so that you could see the ins and outs and what it takes. Um, and you know, you're supposed to have a gardening journal, which I didn't have last year, but I did start this year, which I'm not very good at updating, but I want to encourage you if you are a new gardener, um, get a journal that you can take notes about the weather patterns, about what you're planting, when you're planting it, what's working, what's not working, what to make sure you do the next year. Like for us, we are definitely going to start amending the beds in January um, and February so that we're not doing it in March and it's all ready to go in March and that because I could have started planting peas and other stuff like that in February because they are frost tolerant. Um, so there's a lot of stuff I could have started planting in February, but you know, I'm still learning. So I have to redo the bird netting. We bought hoops. So we got to get those hoops set up um, and I was kind of against hoops and all this kind of stuff but after all the work I did to get the peas planted and then having them ripped up I don't care about aesthetics anymore <laughs> screw aesthetics I want to eat my peas all right so we're done so let me show you where I'm putting these in my garage and um, the setup that I have going on in here so you can see like you know once the your weather temps reach about 30 degrees um, you don't really need a greenhouse. I had a greenhouse set up in here last winter and honestly, like the seeds are doing just fine without a greenhouse. Um, it's uh, with a heat pad and a grow light, they're doing just fine. And I do have some supplemental heat lighting that I don't use because they did <laughs> melt some of the plastic. So I decided not to do those. A um, little bit of a fire hazard. So let me show you what I am doing. Okay, here's my setup. It's not fancy. Um, but it works. The lights are off last night because I forgot to, right now, because I forgot to turn them off last night and they were on all night. <laughs> so I need to get my timer on here. I have a self timer that will turn the lights on and off. I just didn't set it up. Um, I did use it last winter. I have to find it, but they're growing nonetheless, even though I'm not perfect, but I just put the microgreens down here. So I have these big heat pads right here. And then I also have these little ones. And so the little ones only fit like a tray. So um, just keep that in mind. If you do order a little one, you're gonna be limited to um, one tray each. So I recommend getting a big one because you could probably put one, two, three. You could probably squeeze four on a big mat. So I'll link that as well. Um, I couldn't find these same grow lights that I ordered, um, on Amazon. I will look again. I linked a couple grow lights in one of my past videos, but again, you can just use a window, a south facing window, stick them on a table and put them in front of a south facing window and they should do fine. So that's my setup and I'll update you in a couple weeks when they are growing.